Genesis chapter 12. Good to be here this afternoon. Um, weather's setting in on me tonight. My bones are hurting all the way to the bones. Down into the bones, inside the bones, around the bones, up and down the bones. So, I figure if I'm going to hurt like this, I want a foot of snow out there. See? I know. How much snow have you got up In your house, Gary. Yeah. Up where nobody lives. Genesis 12. Genesis 12. The number 12, of course, is God's number for promise. Keeping his promise. Um, that his seed would be as the stars of heaven, which was very interesting because there was an episode of Ancient Aliens that showed up on my DVR where all of the, who is that guy, Giorgio Sukalos that has the stupid looking hair, that, uh, they're aliens, it's aliens, that... They had him on there talking about it. And I'm going, you know nothing about this. No, he doesn't. It, he's got a degree in hair. Okay, that's all he's got. But uh, you don't have to have a degree in something to believe in UFOs. And this, the, here's the thing that I was watching one episode this week of, of Ancient Aliens. And they were, the History Channel was at um, the Alien Con, Alien Convention in 2018, uh, I guess maybe in New Jersey, somewhere around in there. And they had um, people that I've recognized from the research that I've done. One lady in particular is, she is a new age which to the core and um, I bought one of her videos where she's talking about the ETs and they're, how they're coming and basically nine tenths of the video was about how we're going to welcome them and how they're going to help us and how to make a contact with them and how to get the good out of them that we're supposed to get and they're going to bring us a new world and all of this stuff. She was on the stage and uh, Linda Moulton Howe, who is a TV reporter that kind of fell backwards into the whole UFO thing back years ago in the 70s, but she investigates a lot, and I, I like some of the things that she investigates. I like some of the things that she gets her hands on, um, but anyway, she asked the question of the crowd, who in here has had any kind of ET experience, you have missing time, you've been carried, floated through your wall in the middle of the night, you've seen yourself on a craft somewhere, about 40% of the crowd raised their hand and they started taking these people's testimonies. Uh, they'd walk up to the microphone and they would talk openly about it. And believe it or not, there is a, a general idea now amongst those who have had this experience, is what I'll call it. Do I know for a fact they're being taken up in ships? No, I don't know that. But I believe these people have been implanted with at least this idea that they have been. And whereas 20, 30 years ago, this was scaring the daylights out of people, the tide has turned and now there is an, a generalized acceptance of this phenomenon. And all of them are saying that they were, they were taken and had tests done that were related to creating a hybrid between humans and these 
aliens. And that is, this is that which was spoken by the prophets. Guarantee you. And they're speaking of it now as this favorable thing that we're getting used to. That at first everybody was scared about it. Nobody wanted to talk about it. Now everybody's talking about it. And they're talking about seeing what they call reptilians, which in the Bible, they're dragons. They're dragons. And they're not good. None of them are good. But they're accepting this idea that these are our next door universe neighbors that are here to help us out and bring the world to a to make it a better place. And it is a it is one of many deceptions that are out there. Some people don't believe in UFOs. So you know what? The devil's got a different deception for them that's going to lead them to the exact same spot as everybody else is headed to. The great big strong delusion where everybody's going to believe this lie. And uh, that's the shame of it because they have left. They've abandoned the word of God and they no longer believe in God. They don't believe in God. They believe in these gods, these aliens. So anyway, what a world we live in. Genesis chapter 12. God has made the promise to Abram. And he intends on fulfilling that promise. And he does so because he knows the outcome of Abraham. He has foreknew him, foreknown him. He's seen all of his life. He knows what decisions Abraham's going to make. He knows that he's going to do the right thing at the right time. He knows he's going to believe God. He's going to trust God. God is going to make then his covenant with him and make this everlasting promise to him. that he's going to bless the seed that all the nations of the earth are going to be blessed out of this one particular seed of Abraham, which is, of course, is Jesus Christ. And um, we're given this about Abram again before we even know him. God doing the same thing. We'll see the same thing here a little bit. Whence um, Rachel has her two sons, Jacob and Esau, that God has already selected one over the other before they've done anything in this world. God's already selected one. How did he do that? Is that fair? Yes, because God knows Esau. He knows what kind of person he's going to be. He knows what he's capable of. He knows what he's going to do. So, of course, God selects him because God's never wrong about anything. Now, he selects Abram as a man of faith. However, does Abram always have faith in God? And the answer is no. So let's pick it up in Genesis 12, verse 10. And I have verses 14 on, on the screen. Let's see if I have verse 10. Yeah, I do. Genesis 12, verse 10, there was a famine in the land. Abram went down into Egypt to sojourn there. For the famine was grievous in the land. It came to pass when he was come near to enter into Egypt, that he said unto Sarai his wife, Behold, now I know that thou art fair, a fair woman to look upon. Therefore it shall come to pass when the Egyptians shall see thee, that they shall say, This is his wife, and they will kill me. They will save thee alive. Say, I pray thee, thou art my sister, that it may be well with me for thy sake. My soul shall live because of thee. And then he says in verse 14, and here's, the, here's what happened. When it came to pass, the Abram was going to deceive these Egyptians. And there was a reason why. And, and ask the question tonight, why do people lie? Why do they bear false witness? Why do they invent things that are not true? Why do we tell stories that are just not true? And uh, maybe we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask his blessings for tonight. Uh, you pray for me. I just do not feel good this afternoon. I guess it's the weather. It feels like the weather to me. So, Father, we ask your blessings tonight on your word. I pray, dear God, through my weakness, you would be strong. Father, you would bless your people tonight, those who have come to join with us, those who join with us online, those who will watch this later. I pray, dear God, it would be a blessing. 
Father, the Watchman broadcast that's being released today, Father, it would be a blessing as well. The messages that are preached here, the things, Father, that you've given us to say, we thank you, God, for giving us of those things and opening your hand wide to us and feeding us and feeding us very well, feeding us, dear God, with so that we have overflow and we're able to give out such Father, is what maybe others have need of. And Father, help us to continue to be a blessing. That's all I ever ask for, God. I don't want this world's money. I don't want the world's riches. I don't want anything like that. Lord, what I want is to be used by you as your servant uh, to bless somebody else in their life. You've used people, dear God, that in, you brought them into my life at different ages, different stages, and they've all blessed me. Lord, I want to be that back to somebody, maybe a younger generation, maybe a young man, a young lady, maybe a child, maybe, Father, someone who's looking to get into the ministry. Lord, just help us be a blessing tonight. Bless your word, we pray in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, amen. So in verse 14... Uh, let me ask you this question. Why? Give me the various reasons why people will lie about something. Now, in this case here, it seems. Why did he have to do this? Why couldn't he just tell people, hey, mind your own business. It's my family. You got yours. Mind your own business. But he had already invented a lie that he wanted Sarai and himself to tell everybody when they asked him this particular question. So why do you think Abram lied in this case? Why else do people tell lies and withhold the truth from other people? Give me reasons. Fear of getting in trouble. Okay. To cover up a sin? To do what, Gary? Make themselves look better. Like Joe Biden's law degree. Right? He was magna cum, summa cum laude. No, it was, I was the head of the class. I was number one in the whole class. And you find out that's not true. At all. Why else do people lie? Prote explain that. Okay. Okay. So the wife says to the husband, do you like this dress? Does this make me look fat? No, that's not. Yes, Rose. You mad at someone? Yeah, okay. You lie about somebody else to make something up about them to... So everybody thinks ill of them because you don't like them and you don't want anybody else to like them. Je jealousy. Okay. Okay, that does happen. You know, I watch Perry Mason. And I guess maybe a different time in American's culture. But everybody in Perry Mason who was guilty always screamed it out at the end uh, of the program. I did it. I killed him in front of everybody and the judge. And I'm going, that don't happen nowadays. No, uh -uh. no one tells that story. OK, so it's a, to me, it's a little unbelievable, but they do it. Every one of them do it. I did it. And I'm glad I did it. Okay. Why didn't you say that at the beginning of the show? Would have been a five minute show. Anybody else? Okay, so why was Abram lying about this particular thing? I, in Genesis 12, 14, 14, it came to pass that when Abram was coming to Egypt, the Egyptians beheld the woman that she was very fair. The princes also of Pharaoh saw her commended her before Pharaoh, and the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house. And he entreated Abraham, Abram well for her sake. 
And he had sheep and oxen and he asses and men servants and maid servants and she asses and camels and a new bass boat. <laughs> so now he's thinking, hmm, do I want to keep the bass boat? <laughs> uh, and so, and the Lord plagued Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarai, Abram's wife. And Pharaoh called Abram and said, What is this that thou hast done unto me? Why didst thou not tell me that she was thy wife? Why saidest thou she is my sister? So I might have taken her home to be to my to, to wife. Now therefore behold thy wife. Take her and go thy way. Get, get out of here. You plagued my house. I'm sick. I've got the China virus now. Everybody in my house got the China virus now. Get out. And Pharaoh commanded his men concerning him, and they sent him away, and his wife, and all that he had. So I think about this, and he was, he was fearful. He was fearful, he was going into this strange land, strange customs. He knew his wife was good looking. Now, Sarai should have really been impressed by this, because... Abram's going, honey, I'm telling you, you are hot stuff. And I don't want, and Sarah, Sarai's like going, he really believes this. So he, my thinking on this is, he simply didn't trust the Lord. Because God made a promise to him, you and Sarai. I'm going to bless your seed. I'm going to bless your children. Now, Abram is 75. They don't have any children. But he knows he's been told by God himself that he's going to have at least one. And then they're going to have a bunch more. So, to me, it's a simple matter. He wasn't, he wasn't lying like some guys lie about being married. They go into a bar, take their wedding rings off. That way, I'm not married, I'm single, I'm out there, you want to go home? He wasn't doing anything like that. He simply just failed to trust the Lord. Now, Abram is the man that we are adopted into. He is our father by faith. And we are the seed of Abraham by faith. And we have the faith of Abraham because Abram or Abraham is noted for trusting God. But in this case, he simply didn't trust God. He just didn't do it. It's, it's why he said, tell everybody you're my sister. Don't tell them you're my wife because then they'll kill me. And they'll take you. But how wrong was he? Totally wrong. Oh, she's your sister? Well, we'll just take her. And I'll give you a bunch of donkeys for her. Okay? And then he realizes, they just took my wife. And God's plague in Egypt. So, Proverbs 3. Proverbs 29, Psalm 31. Let's look at a few verses tonight. Proverbs 3, let me go to that chapter. Uh, I have verse 5 here, but let's back up a little bit. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For the length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. And I was reading this morning how God is thy shield. And thy buckler, he's the one that is standing in front of you to protect you from all Satan's fiery darts. Verse 3, let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck and write them upon the table of thine heart. And that's something, I, I was going to say this this morning at some point. But it is the heart that either tells the truth or tells a lie. If you're going to lie to somebody, 
You're going to lie to them out of the deceitfulness of your own heart. The Bible says the heart of man is deceitful above all things. Who can know it? Desperately wicked. Or if you have the truth written in your inward parts, you're not going to lie. It, whatever you say is going to be truth. It's going to come out of you because it's, in, it's what's in your heart. Remember, uh, when I was trying to understand why people believe certain false doctrines. And it puzzled me. And I asked God, God, what causes people who've read the same Bible I've read to obviously fall into false doctrines, false conceptions, false ideas? How is it they do that? Is it their mind? Is it something wrong in their brain? Their brain goes stupid or what? No. Belief is... If belief is in your brain, somebody can write it into your brain, somebody can write it out of your brain. But if it's in your heart, there ain't a man in the world can take that out. It's in your heart. You know it. Even if you can't prove to the world, you know it's the truth. Okay? I can... Somebody might try to set me up in a debate over the King James... I may not be the best debating guy in the world and may actually lose the debate, but I know in my heart what I believe about my Bible. And whether I can convince you of it, I don't know. I just know what I know and it's in my heart and you're not going to talk me out of it. So I watch James White in his little bow tie. He wears one of them stupid bow ties every time. I watch him. The guy's arrogant. I don't like him. And I've heard his arguments, and I don't believe a word of ma the man says. But I can tell you, when it comes to debates he's done, in my opinion, he's beat most King James guys hand over fist in debates because he's better at it intellectually. But I know the guys who believe the King James, it didn't phase them one bit, didn't phase me one bit either that James White won the debate. I still believe the King James is the word of God. That's where that is. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Uh, verse Proverbs 3, verse 5. Lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. We know that later on, when it comes time for Abraham to offer Isaac, he does so without any question because he believes it in his heart now that God made him a promise that through Isaac, thy seed is going to be called. And he believes, the Bible tells us this, he believes that even if he kills Isaac, God's going to raise him right back to life again and he's going to live and have children. He, that's, and that's what he believes in his heart. And you cannot talk him out of it. He's going to go do what God told him to do and that is offer. So to me, that, that's the difference right there. Trusting God with just your head is not enough. You can have a head knowledge of what the Bible says. But when it's been tried and tested and you have learned it in your heart, the, the gates of hell cannot talk you out of it after that. Proverbs 29 this is Abram, the fear, of, the fear of man bringeth a snare. He was afraid that Pharaoh was going to steal his wife. Uh, excuse me, Abram. God gave you this woman. God swore that you and her are going to have a child. So do you think that anybody's going to steal your wife now? He did. Which is, which is what, so maybe this, what we're reading in Genesis 12 is one of those things that God did to us. He turned the knowledge that we have from a head knowledge to a heart knowledge. We don't just, we can't, we, we may be able to logically reason it out why we believe it. But as far as, even if you beat me on a question, I'm still believing that the Bible is the Word of God and nothing changes that. 
I still believe Jesus is my Lord, my creator, my savior. And it only took six days to create the universe. And it could have taken a lot less. And it was only 6,000 years ago. And I don't care how many... What are they? What are them tests? Not COVID nineteen nineteen tests. Carbon forty two test. RS two thirty two test. That's not a real test. That's a cable. All of those tests. Well, that proves that this rock here is twelve point four billion years. I don't care. Six thousand years old tops. Okay. The fear of man bringeth the snare. But whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. Abram learned this. That he didn't have to lie. I've had situations where God has brought me. And I've, some I've told about where God has brought me to places where I Realize I don't have to lie. I trust the Lord. And I'm going to tell the truth. If I have to, I will. And I'm going to trust the Lord. Because I trust God. I don't trust man. I don't trust me. But I trust God. Psalm 31, 6. I have hated them. That regard lying vanities. And that's what this was. This was a lying vanity. Say that you're my sister. Don't let on that you're my wife. Because then he might have me killed and he'll steal you. And then, then, then God won't be able to fulfill his promises. Sarah thinking that Abram should sleep with Hagar. Was a huge mistake. She was dead totally wrong on that, wasn't she? Because she didn't, she didn't believe it. It took her longer than it did Abraham. For her to really get this committed in her heart. Even when she laughed about it and then lied about laughing. God said, I know you laughed. Quit your lying. But I'm not going to use that against you. I'm still going to give you a baby. This time next year, you're going to have a baby, Sarah. I'm telling you. Y'all just trust me and believe me. I've hated, I've hated them that regard lying vanities, but I trust in the Lord. Psalm 37. Turn there. Psalm 37. Let's, let's read down verse 1, 2, and 3. Fret not thyself because of evildoers. Lost people are going to get away with lost people deeds. For a limited time only. And then they're going to get severely punished for it. They're going to get punished so bad. And this is why I believe what I believe. I believe Isaiah 66 actually tells us that we're going to see the punishment of them in the lake of fire. I think we're going to see them in there screaming. And we're going to go. Man, I'm glad that ate me. Man, I'm glad that's the Biden family. And not the Hoggard family. Amen. Um, Fret not thyself because of evildoers. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. Uh, young people, you might, you might start working with somebody who knows how to cheat on time cards, time sheets, who knows how to cheat on how they get paid. Don't listen to them. Don't be envious about the workers of iniquity. Because he said, verse 2, For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Nobody gets away with it forever. Nobody does. So do right. 
Give an honest day's work for the pay that you're getting. Uh, some, somebody told me this. They learned a trade and they said they worked in a non-union shop to learn the work ethic. That it, you actually had to work the hours to get paid the hours. Because when they got to a union shop, it wasn't like that. And they found that out very quickly. And I did too, as a young man, watching the Ameren, that was back then it was Union Electric guys, pull up to a job and sleep two hours in their truck, then get out, hook the house up to the electric, electrical grid and put the, uh, the meter in, get back in the truck, take another hour nap and then drive off. And in my mind, I'm going, those guys have been here four hours. I've been here four hours, but I've been working four hours. And I got paid at least $20 an hour less than they did. Now, it didn't make me envious of that job. Because that, to me, that just, that didn't look right. So, don't follow that stuff. Then he said, trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be fed. See all these wicked politicians. This is the only life they know. All they know how to do is rob and steal and make deals with nations to get money kickbacks from these nations. That's all they know how to do. They've never has Barack Obama ever worked a regular job that you know of? Not that I know of. Okay. I don't think the guy ever worked at McDonald's. I don't think he did. Huh? Sure he was. Sure he was. Um, Psalm 115. Verse 10, O house of Aaron, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. And this, see, Aaron is of the seed of Abraham. Aaron, who's from Levi, who's from Jacob, who's from Isaac, who is from Abraham. O house of Aaron, Trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. See, had, the, had Pharaoh made an advance to Abram's wife, God would have stood in between. God would have sent a great big 20 foot tall angel with a big flaming sword and said, don't you even look at her. Don't even look at her. Okay. He is their help and their shield. Ye that fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. He keeps saying it. He's their help and their shield. Trust in the Lord. And that was Abram's, that was his problem. Turn to Psalm 118. And when you turn there, I got a funny story. Who in here has ever seen the day the earth stood still? The 1950s version. Did you ever see that, Steve? Okay. It's, it, it's about 1950s movie where a saucer lands literally on the White House front lawn. And this great big nine foot tall alien robot comes out first. And then an actor by the name of Michael Remy comes out and he plays an alien by the name of Klaatu. Who's there to tell the earth, listen, you've got nuclear weapons and we, rec we are from a galactic federation and we're going to kill all you guys because you can't have nuclear weapons. Unless you change something about yourselves and redeem yourselves, we're, we're going we're gonna to get rid of you all. And I got tickled because this Michael Remy, the guy that played the alien, he had a human form, looked like a normal guy. He's on... An episode of Perry Mason where he's filling in for Perry Mason, the lawyer, and they kept making a joke 
about they saw what they looked like a set of footprints, but it, it was too big to be a set of footprints. And they kept saying, well, maybe a nine foot tall alien robot made those there. And I'm going, I get that joke. I get that. Oh, well. Psalm 118, verse 6. The Lord is on my side. Hey, underline this, underline this passage. If you have a Bible that lets you, one of these electronic Bibles lets you put it in yellow. Or underline it in your favorite reading Bible. But underline, the Lord is on my side. I will not fear. Because we're going to need that. Okay. What if an all out, and I mean shoot them up war, happens this week in this country? We're going to need the Lord. Because the only thing I will know how to do is pray and get in my Bible. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? Kill you. So the question is. Is that so bad now? Since wind and killing us become the worst possible thing that could ever happen. We're going to heaven. The Lord taketh my part with them that help me. Therefore shall I, see, shall I see my desire upon them that hate me. And you will. May the God of heaven bruise Satan under your feet. Shortly, verses like that come into mind. Verse 8. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. And in this case, Abram put confidence in his lies. And I couldn't remember years ago, God dealing with me about this. Mike, you have made lies your refuge. Mike, you're trying to hide behind the lies that you tell. And if you want to keep doing that, then I'm going to show you just how bad those lies can protect you. And that scared me. Mike, don't make lies your refuge. It is better to trust the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. Don't make a deal with the devil. The prince of the power of the air. Don't make a deal with any of his agents either. Don't make a deal with, don't try to think that somebody high up in government can help you out. Okay? Now, I've asked the Lord, um, without telling you everything that I know, we want to go back to Kenya at some point. But, it's been pretty dangerous over there for various reasons. And I've asked the Lord that the next time he sends us to Kenya, give us a friend that we know can help us over there. Give us a friend. Now, I didn't tell God what friend to get. I don't need the prime minister. I don't need the president to be on my side. But I would just like an angel or Jesus himself or just to know that if we go over there, God's going to keep us safe. Because I don't want to go to a Kenyan jail. I don't want to do that. I would be the minority 
in this Kenyan jail. I don't want to be that, okay? So I've asked the Lord to do that. And I'm trusting that he will. Even if I may not know it, I've asked the Lord to do that for us. Verse 10, all nations compass me about, but in the name of the Lord will I destroy them. How would you like it? Every nation in the world gathered, gathered against you to kill you. They compass me about, yea, they, they compass me about, but in the name of the Lord I will destroy them. They compass me about like bees. They are quenched as the fire of thorns, for in the name of the Lord I will destroy them. Thou hast thrust sore at me, though I might fall. But the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and song and is become my salvation. See, all of this, do I have any more? Yes, I do. Psalm 125. Let's just keep going. There's a reason why I tell you that if I wake up real early in the morning and these thoughts start trying to climb into my head, I get my Bible out and go to Psalm, start reading. Psalm 125, 1. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed. And he's not talking about earthly Mount Zion. He's talking about the one in heaven that cannot be moved, but abideth forever. As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people from henceforth even forever. Let me ask you a question. Do you believe the story of Elisha saying to the Lord, Lord, open my servant's eyes so we can see what's going on here. Do you really believe that there was chariots of fire and horses of fire surrounding them? I do. Had I seen that, I would have went, oh, can I ride that? Can I ride that? First video that Joel Friend from Reg Kelly's church ever did edited for me was called Which, Which Bible? And it was a, a VH, it was video cassette. And I didn't do video editing back then. He did it for me. And him and his dad, they had a pilot's license. So they wanted to fly it here to get the, to get the hours in. So I met him over at the Festus Airport. And I see him land here. And I've already got it in my mind. I'm going to ask somehow, some way. So they land and they get out. And I'm looking in that plane. And I'm going, wow, that looks pretty cool in there. And he said, get in. <laughs> yes! They're flying me all, and it took me all of three minutes before I'm completely lost, and I'm going, where are we? <laughs> and then Joel, friend, you got to know the guy, he said, now I'm letting you know now I was trained by a bush pilot. I said, what does that mean? And he went, boom. <laughs> okay. Yeah. What was, what was I talking about on that? Oh, I would want to ride those chariots. And if I believe Elijah is a type of the rapture, I'm looking forward to it. Chariots of fire, horses of fire. As the Lord is round about his people from henceforth even forever. For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous, lest the righteous put forth their hands unto iniquity. See, even God knows that we can only be vexed so long. And then we can't take it anymore. We'll give in. What do he say? For the righteous sake, the days are shortened. So lest the righteous put forth their hands unto iniquity. Do good, O Lord, unto those that be good and to them that are upright in their hearts. And for such as turn aside unto their crooked ways, the Lord shall lead them forth with the workers of iniquity. But peace shall be upon Israel. And folks, I'm just telling you. You got a chance to lie. But it's better to tell the truth. It really is. There's even scriptures. And this is one of those I was reading this morning. A man that will swear an oath even to his own hurt. God will bless that man. Even if you swear an oath and make an offer with somebody and you end up losing out in the deal, God said, that's the kind of man I like to bless. Because you swore an oath 
And you won't lie about it just because you're going to lose the case. You'll tell the truth. And you know what? God will honor that. Now, I'm going to tell you a little story and then I'm going to let you go. This, and this is just my opinion. But years ago, a lot of you weren't here. We used to have a, a lagoon over here in this empty field over here. And it was an eyesore, but we didn't have the money to do anything about it. The city of Festus came down on us and said, you have to do something about that. So we decided that we would try to somehow, some way, raise the funds to put in a sewer pump and pump our sewer 1,200 feet up this hill and another six, 700 feet across over here to England Drive to the, where the sewer line is because the city of Festus was not going to do it. Even though they're supposed to be in charge of the sewer, right? So they were going to force us to put this in ourselves, shell out all the money for it, and believe it or not, when we needed the first $10,000 installment, somebody sent us a $10,000 check. I'm not kidding you. I am not kidding you. Remember that, Rose? I couldn't. Rose called me. And she said, I got a check here for $10,000. I said, Rose, don't cash that. That sounds like one of them loan scams that if you sign it and cash it, you're going to pay 28% interest. Come to find out it was real. So we got all this put in and we thought we had it in the working somehow that anybody that tapped into it, because we paid for the sewer line, we put it in. That anybody that tapped into it, these neighbors up here or down here, that we would get a fee to help us recover our costs. We didn't know that that was only good for a year. And after that, the city of Festus became the true and rightful owner of all of that sewer line. So, so far we've had three different people tap into that line and we've gotten nothing out of it. And I can't tell you how much God has blessed us in the last, since we had that put in. I cannot begin to tell you how much God has blessed us far more than what anybody would have paid us to tap into that line. So instead of you throwing a fit over something... Why don't you just give it to God and let God bless you better than you trying to scratch and crawl for yourself? Amen? Yeah. Trust in the Lord. And I think Abram learned that that night. So when it comes time for him to lay his son on the altar, he does it. Father, bless your word tonight. Thank you for it. Thank you, dear God. This is... This is for us. This is our life. Father, I would like to say that on everything important in my life, I've always trusted you, but that's not been the case. I've tried to cover my own self up. I've tried to make myself look better. God, I've told lies. And Father, I've learned and am learning that telling the truth just is a far better way to go. And to trust you doing it. Knowing that you will always stand up and defend the righteous. Even when the righteous has done wrong, if we will not lie. So Father, teach us to trust you. And let our lives be an example to someone else's life about how to trust you and how you bless them that trust you. Bless your word tonight, we pray in Jesus' name. All God's people said, Amen. Amen.